In the next few videos, we're going to compute the square root of a positive matrix. And the way we're going to do this is by introducing something called the functional calculus. And in fact, we'll learn how to compute, um, given any function under suitable conditions, what it means to apply that function to a given square matrix. So let me go ahead and state the statement of the theorem that we'll prove. And we'll prove this theorem first by doing an example, and then we'll prove the general result from scratch. So it says, let A be a diagonalizable n by n matrix and let f be a function, be a complex valued function, let's say, defined on what I'm going to call sigma of A. And sigma of A is the set of all eigenvalues of A. Now, if we have this set up, we can already define what f of a is. So let's do that. So f of a is going to be defined as p f of d p inverse, where p is the n by n matrix is a matrix of eigenvectors of A written as columns. And D is the corresponding matrix of eigenvalues. And what do I mean by f of d? And f of d is defined to be, now d is a diagonal matrix. So let me just write out exactly what we're doing. If we have a matrix of eigenvalues, and these eigenvalues can repeat. So let me just write all n of them. And then this is 0 everywhere else. We define f of this matrix to be f applied to the elements along the diagonal and 0 everywhere else. So this is f of lambda 1, f of lambda n, and 0 everywhere else. So, so far, all we've done is set up um, our assumptions. So we have a matrix, we have the eigenvalues, we can define f applied to A, provided that we have a complex valued function defined on the set of eigenvalues. And here's the statement of the theorem. Then there exists a polynomial Q such that Q of A. Now, what do I mean by Q of A? Q is a polynomial, and it makes sense to multiply matrix. So we can take A, we can square it, we can cube it, we can also take it to the zeroth power, that's just the identity matrix. And then we can also multiply these by coefficients. So if I have any polynomial, it's very easy to define what Q of A is. You just write your polynomial, and where you have your variable, you replace it with the matrix A. So this is some polynomial in A, but it turns out to equal F of A as defined previously by this method of breaking a matrix up into its eigenvalues and getting its eigenvectors and constructing it this way. So that's what the statement of this theorem is. And it's very surprising because, in general, you can think of a very strange function, such as the square root. And this is telling you that there is a way to write the square root of that given matrix in terms of a single polynomial. And what we're going to do first is do this through a simple example. 
and illustrate it with that simple 2 by 2 matrix, and then we'll prove the general theorem. So we might as well start this example now and continue it in the next video. So the example is going to be let A equal 10, 6, 6, 10. And our goal is to compute the square root of A. So the first step is find the eigenvalues. So another thing that we'll do is we'll review how to do these things. So to find the eigenvalues, compute the determinant of 10 minus lambda, 6, 6, 10 minus lambda. And this equals 100 um, plus lambda squared minus 20 lambda minus 36. And some of this simplifies. We get lambda squared minus 20 lambda plus 64. And this also factors into lambda minus 4 and lambda minus 16. So we know what our two eigenvalues are. They are 4 and 16. And while we wait for the next video, you can try to compute the corresponding eigenvectors, and I'll just give you the answer there in a moment.